Today in this 2014 Chevrolet Camaro, we're going to review and install the draw type sport frame trailer hitch receiver, part number 24850. This is what the hitch looks like when it's installed on a Camaro. At first glance, you can see that the uh, hitch does sit below the bumper. There's no cutout involved, which is kind of nice. Our receiver opening is going to be an inch and a quarter. And then if you look back here, it's going to use that half inch diameter hitch pin or your favorite locking hitch pin. On the very bottom here, we got our loops here for our safety chains. Most safety chains will work on here. It goes to our square cross tube though, which does have an angle built into it, and it goes up to our vehicle at our attachment points. And also installation wise, this is actually not too bad one to install. You don't have to do any cutting or anything like that around the bumper cover, as some models you do have to do that. With this hitch on this vehicle, we did not have to do anything like that. Now the weight capacity of our hitch is going to be rated for 200 pounds of tongue weight, which is a weight that pulls down on the hitch at the ball. And it's also good for 2,000 pounds of tongue weight. Now always double check with your manufacturer to make sure that your engine and transmission combination can pull this kind of weight. Next we'll give you some measurements to help you out in selecting some accessories, such as a bicycle rack or a cargo carrier. For ground clearance, keep in mind that you have a distance of 9 and 3 quarter inches from the top of the receiver opening down to the ground, and from the center of a hitch pin hole, to the outside edge of the bumper, I measured out eight and a half inches. Now we're taking a look at the hitch and the features. Let's go ahead and show you how we installed it. First part of our install is actually pretty straightforward. The hitch does go right up into place. However, the hardware we put on this section right here, it's easier to show you outside before we put it on. There are pre-existing studs that connect the bumper core to the frame, and this hitch sits on those bolts like that. There's a nut, and this will fit around the nuts. When it sits into place, it'll be completely flat against the uh, bumper structure. After the hitch is in place, the flat washer will go on here like this. It's a little bit oversized, but that's fine. And the locking flange nut will go on top of the stud, because the stud's long enough that it'll just take up the rest of the bolt. We'll do this on both sides of the hitch when we put it in place. Let's take a look at the location where this will go. Here's our bumper structure right here, and here's the end of the frame, and here is a bolt that our hitch will go against. So it'll, that hole will ride over this bolt right here is sit flat against the metal, and then the rest of our hardware will go on top of this bolt here and hold our hitch in place. This is our passenger side. This is going to be the same thing over on the driver's side. At this point, you want to get an extra set of hands to help hold it in place. We'll maneuver it up in there. You may have to pull the bumper cover around a little bit. It'll flex to help you get into place. Put it over a stud. Make sure it fits over it. Then we'll install our hardware. Okay, at this point our hitch is secure and we can let go of it. The hardware is just finger tight on the studs right now. So we'll take a half inch socket and we'll tighten the nuts down till it takes up all the slack. We'll do this on both sides of the hitch. Our third attachment going towards the front of the vehicle, you notice there's a gap right here and that is supposed to be here. Now between different vehicles, this gap between the hitch and this bracket right here will vary. So they do give you extra hardware. Now between this gap here, you're gonna use as many washers as possible to go into place. And that takes up our gap. Then you take one or three bolts that comes with the kit and this conical tooth washer goes on like that. The teeth on the washer goes towards the hitch. That will need to go through all the washers and through the, the bracket. Now on the bracket, by the way, that holds pre-existing so we don't have to do any drilling as well. Then, the next stipulation is our lock nut that goes in behind it. Push it in a little bit and then thread in the lock nut. When you end up tightening this all down completely, you want to make sure that the bolt doesn't come past the lock nut and touch this component right here. The bolt should become just flush with the end of the nut. If it goes past it pretty far, then you need to change out the bolt. And don't be afraid to put more washers underneath the head of a bolt as well to take up slack. Once we have our combination of our hardware sorted out, we'll go ahead and tighten it down. We'll need a 916 socket and an extension with a wobble end on it so you can get access to the bolt. And then you'll need a 916 wrench for a nut and back and tighten it down. After you have it tightened down, torque it down with a torque wrench and verify that the threads come back towards the end of the nut. Now we'll go back to the bumper for those two attachments there. We'll torque those guys down as well. Now I'll finish it for draw tight sport frame trailer hitch receiver, part number 24850 on this 2014 Chevrolet Camaro.